this session of Photoshop, we're going to do an advanced selection using color range. And what I've got is an image opened up, and I have a muddled gray background. We have flyaways right in here. We have a hat, different details that we're going to need to capture. I'm going to do this very quickly, though, by going into Select, Color Range. Once I've done that, I can literally go in here with this eyedropper to add to sample and literally start clicking on the areas of the background. And that's what I'm doing right now. In fact, I can even go right in here and click. What I'm doing is I'm literally knocking out this gray background in and around the image. Knocking out what I need to knock out. If I want to, I can move the sliders. You can see I can get a little more, a little less, a little tighter, much tighter, or a little more fuzziness. There we go. Then at that point, I can go in here and I can uh, load and save this. I can invert this. I think we'll keep it this way. And I can simply go in here and click OK. And I get this selection around the image. Now I want to keep it real simple, but uh, if I go in here to the polygonal lasso tool and set that to subtract from selection, I can literally go around different parts of this image and cut away anything that I can see that might actually be in the selection. Now that's probably not everything, so I'm going to show you a little trick. But what I'm going to do is go in here, double click on the layer, and let's give it a quick name. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to cut. Control X is cut. There we go. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, take a look at our selection, and I see that we have a lot of good selection work. But you probably can't see this, so I'll see what I can do about coming in as much as possible. You're going to see areas that actually clipped away on the inside. This color range will pick up some of those subtle pixels, and that created a little problem for us. So I'm going to show you a little quick fix on that. Let's go in here and let's double check on a few other things. Hair looks okay. There's some edge work that I don't think I'm going to like too much. And I may need to go in there and tweak that just a little bit. But other than that, pretty good selections. Selection around the hat. This isn't bad. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in here at this point and... Uh, tweak these edges just a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the control key, that's the command key on Apple, and click on the layer. That adds the selection back again. Then what I want to do is go to any selection tool and click on refine edges. And if you can't see that, let me zoom in on that for you. Refine edges. Zoom back out here for a moment and click on it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to check it on a black and check it on white can check it as the mask. That's interesting. I see the areas that need to be fixed. All right, here's what I want to do. I want to go in here right now and I want to go in here, pull this selection back, go back into preview. See how the halo is starting to go away? I'm going to come in a little bit further on some areas. There we go. Smooth it, feather it, there we go. A little less on the contrast, just a bit. A little less on the feather. There we go. I'm going to go in here and click OK. 
Now this is interesting because it's not going to cut. And this is going to allow us to tweak this selection. If I go in here, I'm going to see that right off the bat, I've gone in here and I've clipped away some great information as far as those eyelashes go. So what I'm going to do is go in here and actually add to selection. And I'm using the polygonal lasso tool and going right around this area. And there's the selection popping out. If you can't see that, I'll bring that in for you. Okay. All right, now I'm going to bring it back out. And then what I want to do is double click on this hand tool that gives me full workspace. If I want to, I can go around and check the selection. Looks good. Coming in just a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm uh, literally going to go in here and go to Select Inverse. And then cut out that trailing edge of pixels. But here's the fix. Some of these areas are missing information. It literally cut into the design. The edges, a little fuzzy on this edge, but that's okay. It'll help to blend into the new environment. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to use the History Brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it back in my history, back in here, and then literally set it right here. Let me show it to you. Click right there. Set source for the history brush. And that's going to be the first part of the image. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. And go to the last part of the image. So. Not that far. Right here. Now, with the history brush, I'm literally painting back in the detail. Space bar to get around. So I'm literally keeping the inside and cutting away. Just checking. Make sure that nothing's been cut away on the inside. There we go. That looks good. Now that we have our selection the way we want it, let's try something. Let's go in here and let's place a smart object. I'm going to go File, Place. What I'm looking for is some kind of vector graphic. I found one. And I'm going to literally expand this. Now, smart object, especially vector, there is no reason to worry about stretching this as far as I'd like. Because it's map coordinates of color, it'll expand and contract with no problem. I'm going to hit Enter. This is going to take just a second to render this. But when placing a smart object, you're going to notice in the Layers palette that it says, Girl, there's just one layer. But in a moment, another layer will appear, and it will appear right above Girl. And then at that point, I'm going to be able to bring that down, let you uh, see the selection work, because she will be selected and right over this new background. And we can go with these vibrant backgrounds, these just subtle moves and uh, create all kinds of effects. We can go with different pictures, put people in different scenes. Here's our smart object, clicking on the illustration, dragging it down. And what you're going to see is you're going to see the, all the really cool selection work. We're going to see everything from eyelashes, to all kinds of techniques, good selection work around the edges, around the hat, this looks good. And doing these quick selections is going to be a fast, easy way to select around products, people, all kinds of great stuff.